Greetings, my name is Sean Olson. In the last video, I showed you how to import a level from the Gold Source engine, and, a, and the level we used was in CS 1.6. Now we're going to use a VMF from the Source engine. So we're going to open up Importers and Import VMF or Map File. And I'm also going to open up the settings so that we can go over a couple of things. One, if you want your models to import correctly, you need to have your model source path set up. And you need the QCs and SMDs from your models in their correct paths inside there. Now, if you don't have access to those, you may have to decompile those. I am not going to cover actually extracting and decompiling your models. However, what I will show you is where you want to go to be able to do that. You'll go to and get NEMS GCF scape and you'll get Crowbar. And I strongly suggest you contact the developer of Crowbar and get the very latest version which is in beta and is missing some features, but it makes uh, creating your models generating your QCs and SMDs for reuse in Wallworm much, much easier. So don't get the public version. Uh, contact the developer and ask him if you can test out the new version, which is coming out sometime in the future. Once you've extracted all of those into your model source, then you can start importing them with Wallworm. Also, we want to make sure that our material generator path is in a location that has all of our materials already imported, both for the brushes and for your models. And um, that is covered in other videos. Now that I have my paths all the way set up and I know everything's configured, I can then go import my level. Now I have two options if I'm going to bring in the props. I can import the level first and then import the props. But it's actually easier if I first import a prop library from a VMF before I import the level. And I'm going to do that just now. I'm going to choose the level that I want to import. And what it's going to do is read that and look for all the props. And then it's going to import them. And while it's importing them, it's also going to save a copy of them into what's called the prop library which is in your um, 3ds Max Projects Imports folder. And those can be used with um, XREF scenes and XREF objects and other utilities, which we'll go over in a little bit. So I'm going to pause here while it's importing these. It'll take a minute. Okay, it didn't take as long as I thought. So it imported all of the props from that scene. And they're here at the World Origin. And we're just going to leave them right there for now. And uh, if you go to the layer manager, you're going to notice that there's a bunch of layers um, with the LODs, the um, halls, the models, and different things. Just leave those in there for now. And now, now at this point, we can import our level. And I'm pretty much going to leave the default brush generation. This option is going to be going away here soon and we don't need to validate geometry anymore. Um, some of these options just don't reply anymore. Um, ignore rotation angles and apply rotation to, just ignore all that. Just keep this with default and hit choose VMF or map file. Again, I'm gonna choose the map that we already um, imported the props for. And we just let it go. And this will take my computer approximately two minutes, I believe, to build the scene. So I'm going to pause. All right, it's imported. We have a bunch of black here. I'll fix that in a moment. If you bring up the Mac script listener, you'll get kind of a report. Um, in this case, could not find um, some props. Couldn't import them. And there was no uh, prop library for them. So those props are not in, going to be in the scene, but they will be entities for them. And you can see how long it took to parse to get an idea in the future if you mess with it more. 
So it's all black to begin with because it brought in the lights and it's lighting the scene by default uh, with the scene lights. Uh, sometimes you may find it better uh, when you're doing your levels and you want to just look at the geometry to change your view uh, shading to just shaded instead of realistic. Get a view like this. And once your scene is in, you may find a very convenient button here called Hide Tool Textures. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through the scene and it's going to hide a bunch of um, tool textures like Sky and No Draw and all those. And it will create a bunch of selection sets. For example, um, if you want to select just the sky objects, you can click here and select all the skies. Of course, those are hidden. And now they're unhidden because I just unhid them. But I want to hide those to make it easier to see what's going on here. Okay, so we have all of the props here. And notice the original props that are at the origin of the scene. I can hide those. Um, they shouldn't export. It's fine to keep them in here. Um, they're told to exclude by their settings. So I'm going to hide the imported models. I'm going to hide imported collision halls imported LODs, and I'm going to hide the VMF exclude layer. And now we have our props and all the displacements and everything and, and geometry. So now we're just going to cover a couple other things and uh, give you a few tips. One thing is when you're in shaded view, you may notice visual glitches. As you can see, the, um, the displacements here have a weird glitch visually where um, the, the sort order seems to be kind of messed up and again, we can switch back to realistic mode and they will appear correctly. Now with realistic mode, again, you're going to get uh, a lot of things having shadows and lights based off of the lights in your scene. So, um, that's something to be aware of when we first launched it, the light was hidden in, underneath those sky textures or sky brushes. And now, um, because we hid those, we can see again. So it's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to now actually start over from scratch to show you something else. And that is this, that we had originally imported the prop library from VMF file. And when that happened, it saved all of those files, saved all of those props into your prop library. And what's useful for that is... Even had, after we had done that, we could have actually deleted all the props in the center of the scene. And then at that point, if we go and import the level again, and I'm going to go ahead and do that again, it's, and then pause, there's going to be a slight difference in the way the scene is set up. Okay, I'm going to hide the tool textures. And there's something about the scene. The props are here even though we didn't import them yet. And that was because we had already imported them to the prop library. So when you import a level, it will automatically look for the library props. And notice if we select one of these objects, they're um, XREF objects. So they're, being, they're using a proxy uh, from that prop library object. Now there may be a few uh, things that are not correct by default, when you first import, for example, the skins of props might be wrong. Um, in this case, this object should have a couple skins that we should be able to change in the, uh, in the parameters of the entity over here. What we need to do then is actually import the props, the, the wall or model tool helpers into the scene. And if we already have these in a prop library, what it's going to do when I click this is it's actually going to just add those um, prop library objects as XREF scenes into this uh, scene. And then it will apply all of the parameters that we then should be able to access um, in this prop. So I'm going to pause it here. It's just going to take a few seconds. Okay, so now we see actually this updated because it now has the correct skin. And we can select this object now and go to the modify panel and you'll be able to do things like change its skin, 
and see the change in the viewport. Um, here's another example where this sign changes based off of its skin. And that works when you use uh, have imported the props from the scene entities button. And now that we've done that and those props are from the prop library, if we go to the XREF scenes, you'll see that it's actually referencing um, the Walworm model tool helpers uh, scenes in this scene. And that means that you can actually go into those files or have someone else working on those files if you need be and update this scene itself and update the models that are affecting this scene. And these are the paths you can see. It's wherever your Vault or wherever your uh, 3ds Max project setting is, and then a folder name Import Wallworm Prop Library, the mod name, and then the folder path. One important thing to note is um, these can be hidden. You can select them all, and um, by default, the importer has them invisible. However, you may find that some versions of Max does not actually hide them until you actually check the visible and then uncheck visible. It's a weird bug, but um, you may find that. So if you see all the props in there from your references and you don't want them to be visible, just toggle this visibility um, checkbox. And once your scene is here, you can go about adding new props or tweaking old ones that you may have uh, made in your less experienced days. Again, my name is Sean Olson. This has been a demonstration of using Wallworm to import a level from Source into 3ds Max. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, or you can always get the latest version of Wallworm or any of the new Wallworm plugins at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.